Not Another Anon Story, Chapter 2. Sometime later, the Gagalomers return from their quest of admittedly mildly humorous, blatant discrimination, the door opening, and a lot of them streaming back into the building. Twilight was in the lead, looking back to speak to the others. Girls, I keep telling you, there's no such thing as curses. I'm pretty sure you all just misunderstood her, because we were all trying to talk over her. She said with a disapproving, somewhat tired tone, as the rest of them filed inside after her. And I keep telling you that she's gonna put us in a big tasty stew if we aren't careful. I even said it in a song, so you know it's true. Pinkie Pie said in a somewhat defensive, insistent tone as she walked through the door after Twilight. I don't know if I'd go that far with it, but something is awful with that mare, Twilight. Living out in the forest like that, it, it just ain't natural. Um, no offense, Fluttershy. She said quickly as she entered and Fluttershy followed behind. None taken. The Everfree is a lot different than the White Tail Woods. Even I won't usually go in there, unless there's an animal in trouble. The Make Pegasus muttered as she slipped inside. She looked a bit uncomfortable, shaken even by whatever had gone on out there. Yeah, living in there must take some real guts and know-how. Rainbow Dash said as she trotted inside, looking a bit excited. She may be kinda creepy, but I bet she's a real bad flank. And the stripes are pretty cool too. Suddenly, Pinky appeared in front of the blue pegasus, with a playfully stern look on her face, causing Rainbow Dash to give a small startled noise and fall on her flanks as that pink pony spoke. Hey, watch the language, Dashy! There could be fools listening! She said, before looking off into the distance, deeper into the store. Uh, what are you talking about, Pink? Oh, yeah, Apple Bloom and Spike are still over there with that human, aren't they? She said, prompting the rest of the group to pick up the pace and trot over to where they had left a lot of them earlier. They all came upon a fairly calm scene. The baby dragon and little earth filly were both listening to the strange creature, the human read to them, from a book. His bag opened next to them as he smiled down softly at the two. They say of God, names name thee not. That holds good to me. No concept expresses me. Nothing that is designated as my essence exhausts me. They are only names. Likewise, they say of God that he is perfect, and he has no calling to strive after perfection. That too holds good of me alone. I am owner of my might, and I am so when I know myself as unique. And the unique one, the owner himself returns into his creative nothing, of which he is born. Every higher essence above me, be it God, be it man, weakens the feeling of my uniqueness, and pales only before the sun of this consciousness. If I concern myself for myself, the unique one, then my concern rests on his transitory mortal creator who consumes himself, and I may say, all things are nothing to me. And with that, he closed the book and set it down, giving a small yawn as he leaned forward a bit. The six older ponies coming in a bit closer, stopping about 15 feet away, similar to Apple Bloom. Spike, he had noticed, seemed a bit more comfortable to be in his general vicinity, sitting about 10 feet away. He smiled at the returning group softly and gave a small wave. Well, about time you got back. I was about to send these two home and come look for you myself. He joked as he stood up, stretching with a soft groan, his hands clasped over his head before he relaxed again. He was certainly quite a big one, standing a bit over half again as large as a lot of them. He crossed his arms and looked down at them, smiling softly. So am I free to go now, or did you need me to stay for the lynching? Twilight gave a small frown and shook her head. Actually, if you wouldn't mind, I was hoping they could come with me and answer some questions. She said politely as she met his eyes, looking somewhat anxious. Not that he could really blame her, she had passed out from coming within three feet of him. Anyone, or well, any pony, would be a bit skittish after seeing that. He gave a small sigh and shrugged. I guess I could, as long as you compensate me for it. Like I said, I'm sort of in a tight situation here, not knowing where I am at all, and I can't really spend time volunteering myself for free. He finished, crossing his arms. She smiled softly and gave a nod. I can see to it that you're given proper compensation for your time and for your apparent distressing situation. And I may be able to help you out if I know more about you. Hmm. Alright. I suppose doing as you say would be in my best interest. He said slowly, as he thought before giving a small nod of affirmation. Fine, I'll play ball. But if I find out that you aren't going to pay me, I'm going to stand outside of your bedroom window. Menacingly. He said firmly, seeming satisfied by a response, as she gave a displeased grimace. 
I assure you, we will make sure to get you the help that you need, if you give us the help that we're asking for. Now, human- Oh, and another thing. Stop calling me that. You aren't even fucking pronouncing it right. My name is Anon. Oh, or do you want me to start calling you Purple Smart Horn Horse instead of Twilight? He said, giving her a flat, somewhat impatient expression. Pinky seemed to think that this was an appropriate time to cut in, interrupting the conversation. Ooh, that sounds like fun! Do me next! What are you gonna call me if I keep calling you Human? Oh, how about, um, Fluffy Pink Happy Thick Flank Horse? She said excitedly, as she bounced up and down a bit, a sparkle in her eye. The man raised an eyebrow slowly, as he looked over at Twilight again. Is... is she alright? He asked slowly, as he ran a hand through his hair. She seems awful... Uh, chipper, there, for no real reason. Purple Smart gave a small sigh and nodded. She's fine, that's just how Pinky is human... um... Anon. She finished sheepishly, looking a bit apologetic from her slip-up. Rainbow Dash looked over at Pinky, elbowing her softly and whispering. Thick flank horse? Well, if you got it, own it. Pinky said, as if it was obvious, rolling her eyes a bit as she struck a little pose. A small cough rang out of the room, and all eyes turned back to Applejack as she spoke. Well, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I've got things to do back at the farm, now that this is all over and done with. Come on, Apple Bloom. She said firmly, motioning with her head as she trotted back off towards the door. Aw, do I have to go? Anon was gonna tell me another story! She said, with a sweet little pout, as she looked over at the older pony with large, soft, sad eyes that only a foal could pull off to such a devastating effect. Before Applejack had a chance to answer, he cut in. Apple Bloom, it's fine. Here, you can borrow one of my books. Just make sure to bring it back here when you're done, alright? I'll grab it from whoever's working in that day. He said gently, as he took a book out of his bag and slid it across the floor towards the filly, who stopped it with her hoof and picked it up to look at it. And then... Okay, thanks, Anon. I promise I'll bring it back. She smiled up at him before placing the book in her mouth and trotting off after Applejack, who gave him a small scowl and closed the door behind herself. Actually, I gotta go too, guys. Rainbow Dash said as she headed towards the door as well. I still got cloud cleaning to take care of. As it turned out, it looked like everyone had somewhere to be, and a few muttered excuses later, everyone save for Pinkie Pie, Anon, Twilight, and Spike had somewhere else to be, and saw themselves out of the building. It looked like Pinkie actually worked there, unsurprisingly enough, and was cleaning up the mess left by Spike's cupcake binge as they left the building. It seems like the ponies are actually tolerating Anon. It may not be the best start in a friendship, but it's good enough. Anyways, let's get on to our adorable donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Zara630, Raiden, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Dospo, Delta Omega, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Cadge, Skyochia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kids in A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David e. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal K. Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hotrick Plinkart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, and Shyfire. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.